Hello, I'm Mark Smith from the Social Media Research Foundation. And I am Harald Meyer, Chief Data Scientist at the Social Media Research Foundation. Today, we'd like to talk to you about the Insights service from the Node Excel Pro application. Using the Node Excel Pro Insights service, we can turn data sets created with Node Excel into interactive dashboards and web-based information visualizations. It's a fairly simple task to go into the Node Excel Pro data export menu, enter a username and a password, click a few buttons, and send a data set into the Node Excel Pro Insights cloud reporting service. When your data is uploaded to the Insights service, you'll then be able to access it through a URL. And this URL will show you the data that we have accumulated uh, around your topic. We're moving into the travel season, and it's interesting to look at how people are posting uh, messages about the travel process to social media. We're interested in understanding how different airlines are tweeted about. And in particular, we're interested in how people experience bad travel experiences. For example, when people tweet the word lost baggage. So this is the lost baggage report drawn from the X, formerly Twitter, platform. So Harold is going to show us what we can see when we look at this report. It contains uh, 19, almost 20,000 tweets, uh, 23,000 people were involved, 13,000 people wrote messages that contained the word lost baggage. It's a large collection of messages, and yet we would like to have some insights into it. Rather than reading 20,000 messages, we'd like to know who the important people are, what the important moment in the data set was, uh, what the uh, words or sentiment are of the messages. These kinds of insights would be nice to have uh, at a lower amount of effort than reading all the messages. So Harold, what do you see when you look at the Node Excel Pro Insights Twitter report for lost baggage? Okay, this is the start page of our insights report. You can see the network map here on the left, and we have an overview of the data uh, right here. We see the top active users, um, how they connect to the top mentioned users in the report. And this is just a brief overview of, of the whole data set. There are lots of data dimensions that we can explore. and. Uh, one of the well, most obvious dimensions is uh, time. So let's just have a look at the time report page that's right here. Wow, so that's a year of people talking about lost baggage. So that's all of 2023. Yes, exactly. Hmm. So you can really see the winter, spring, summer uh, cycle. The summer is clearly the travel peak season. For sure. So there seems to be a lot of lost baggage in very early in the year, and then well, things slow down, um, and then in the summer season, things go up again. And um, yeah, let's have a look at well, who is most active um, right here. So we see that British Airways is the top active user in this data set. They have sent more than 300 tweets um, over the year. And at the same time, they have received more than 735 tweets uh, related to lost baggage. And when we look down these lists, we see um, other airlines. So there's Lufthansa, Singapore Airlines, um, Swiss Airlines. So um, well, very large airlines in, in these lists. That's interesting. So it's also the case that airlines operate in very geographically different environments. Can we see this data not just over time, but over space? Yes, we certainly can. We have our location report page, mm. which shows us a world map and all the users and where they're located. These are the self-described locations by the users in their profile. And 
again, if we well, simply click on, on one of these groups, um, then we can see that there is a spatial bias. In this case, it's, it's pretty much a, of a global network, but um, we see a bias here in India, which makes a lot of sense because this is the, the India cluster. Um, let's zoom out again and look at G3, that's British Airways. Mm -hmm. uh, we see a lot of dots right here in, in Britain, but also on North America. Oh, let's zoom out again. And then, well, each of these clusters uh, will reveal a spatial bias. Mm -hmm. That's Canada. Yes, and Qantas, so this is well, Australia, right? So. Right, right. Here we go. Um, Australia. Well, one, one more. This is Delta Airlines. That should be well, North Australia America. Australia, Atlanta, in the United States. Right. Yeah. Interesting. So we can really see that while tweets are coming from all over the planet for any given airline, they're often uh, in regions that they serve and that we can now slice and dice social media data, not only by time, but also by space. Um, Mark, can you tell us how sentiment analysis works on NodeXL? Yeah, uh, NodeXL allows the user to define vocabulary lists. And of course, we do have a default set of positive and negative uh, English words that are uh, used for our sentiment analysis. So when we collect messages from a social media platform, we then use these lists to count how often a person or a group or a collection of messages has uh, words that appear on list one, list two, uh, in this case, positive and negative words. And that means that we can have an overview of just what kinds of words are being mentioned that are positive and negative, but we can also click on any particular user. In this case, those users are airlines, and we get the particular set of positive and negative words associated with the messages from that user. So this gives us a sense of what kinds of things they're sorry about, uh, but it also gives us a feeling for the kinds of positive and negative words that are being used in relation to travel related interruptions, typically, uh, in this case, lost baggage. Uh, that's right. And well, if I just select here um, British Airways, um, we just are focused on the 304 tweets that were sent by British Airways that we see right here. And we have a very nice feature integrated and that's a drill through. So if we right click on that user, there is a drill through page available um, that says author details. And that takes us to a dedicated page just um, around these tweets from British Airways. And here we have some statistics. Um, we, on the one hand, we have the, all the tweets um, we can read right here. We can see um, which users were um, mentioned mostly or replied to. Um, we can have a look at um, the URLs that are shared. So apparently British Airways does um, reply with a, a link that um, directs you to um, British Airways baggage topics. Um, so that, that's the main URL that's mentioned right here. And well, we can just Go back to the previous page and let's click on Lufthansa, drill through again, and then mm -hmm. we see the same report page again, just with different content. And it's it's all interactive. Um, so Lufthansa will also have uh, a link in their tweets, which will point to a baggage URL uh, where the customers can um, engage <laughs> to get there. Can check. we compare Lufthansa to British Airways? Oh, we certainly can do that. So um, we have well, so many report pages here, and we have the compare to page. So this is uh, this gives us the, the option to uh, to compare two data points. Um, so we could 
just select Lufthansa here on the left side and the data will filter. And then I will hold the control key and select British Airways. And then you see the data will filter. Uh, in this case, we don't have much media here. Oh, it, it, oh it, it's coming in. So, um, so yeah. those are the images from that user, and we get to compare uh, their profile photos. We get to compare their uh, who they're interacting with, uh, what language they're using, how often they reply to others. Uh, it's interesting also to notice uh, we can see what mechanism they're using to uh, use Twitter. Uh, Qualrix XM for Lufthansa and uh, British Airways, it looks like they are using a, uh, a, a different uh, platform uh, in order to tweet. That's Live right. person. Yeah. Uh, so on this page, we can compare two of the, the groups or, or users, and we also have a compare four page uh, where we can pull in data from four different data points. So let's just select here, well, just G1, um, and then we go down here and set to the second section, that's where we select G2. We will have G3 here and G4. Mm -hmm. And this is letting us see how to contrast these four different groups. That's different right. Influencers, they actually use hashtags differently, they link to different URLs, and they do have a lot of similarity in the words they're using. So if you're interested in your own Nordic Pro Insights report, Mm -hmm. Send us an email or sign up for a webinar. Uh, we would love to create one of these reports for you uh, based on your own query, on your own topic. And, um, well, just reach out to us. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.